Welcome back everyone to Home UP Tutor. In this particular session, we will be discussing about pedagogy. In the previous videos, we had already dealt with the andragogy and the hutagogy courses. Now here we will be dealing with pedagogy. What is pedagogy? It is actually a study of how teachers teach. In the basic English, it is termed as how the teachers teach. Okay. So where did this origin? The term of pedagogy originated from the Greek word pedagogos actually pedagogos were the people the slaves okay slave people who used to get the children to school okay who used to take the children from home and drop them to school so basically the understanding is these people used to help or aid in the learning by bringing children to school so same way this particular word was modified into pedagogy in the modern learning system or education system okay now it basically deals with theory and practice of teaching okay so hutagogy is actually self-directed learners andragogy are the people or the adult learners pedagogy means usually it deals with children or people who need a yeah, support instructional or support instructional support for their learning usually the children or dependent learners okay so instructional strategies, these are the concepts of pedagogy. Pedagogy has major concepts or dimensions which we will be dealing with. First and foremost, we will be dealing with the instructional strategies. So pedagogy involves selection and application of these instructional strategy which has to align with objectives. See, for teaching, for any process for that matter, objectives have to be laid down, right? Objectives have, been, have to be laid down. That means the things that have to be accomplished by the end of teaching. So before the class starts only objectives have to be laid down and these objectives have to be achieved can be achieved by using certain strategy or certain using certain instructions so always remember while preparing for a class for preparing the strategies for a class the objectives have to be kept in mind okay the strategies might be direct instruction or inquiry based learning or cooperative learning any any kind of learning that has to be aligned with the objective of the class next one is about learning theories pedagogy is deeply rooted in the learning theories okay the theories which we had learned in the earlier classes previous classes so similarly pedagogy is also rooted in the theories the theories are actually behaviorism theory cognitivism theory constructivism theory and humanism theory okay based on all these theories is the principles of pedagogy laid down okay so how the learning occurs how the students learn and how the learning occurs through the proper teaching methods so that is laid down by these foundations like behaviorism cognitivism constructivism and humanism okay all these shape our learning strategies and learning theories a little information about these theories constructivism constructivism means that learner is in control of his or her own learning okay they construct their own learning Behaviorism deals with the behaviors or all the observable and measurable behaviors. Okay, so the basic thing about behaviorism is that the teacher sees and observes the individuals or the learner's behavior and try to try to rectify certain mis, uh, misbehaviors and try to instill certain behaviors. So initially, what happens is that these behaviors are made are made to be practiced. Okay, are practiced and later on it becomes as a habit okay that is a basic understanding of behaviorism that actually it studies the individual's observable and measurable behavior that are repeated until they become automatic okay and the final one is cognitivism 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 deals with and observes it it means that it, ob it observes the new behavioral pattern and focuses on how to learn okay all these things are applied into the learners learning learning setup and based on that, we bring up certain strategies, we bring up certain principles and based on that, the curriculum, everything is based on based in these theories. Okay, all the psychological theories which we learned in the educational psychology video, the same way, these theories are also helping us in preparing the pedagogical principles. Next one is learner-centered approach. Modern pedagogy, see, the pedagogy actually means the teaching method, but we have to keep in mind about the learner 
the unique characteristics interest and the needs of each learner we know all the learners are different because we need differentiated instruction different differentiated instruction for each type of classes so designing these instructions based on their interest based on their characteristic based on their needs of each and every learner is actually called as learner centered approach we need to understand the learner so teach the basic basic need of teaching is actually to make the learner understand about the certain topic right so when we make these um, strategies around the learner it becomes more effective okay it more, more effective why because it emphasizes on the individual individuality because we are checking on checking on the learner and see how they are learning right and also critical thinking all these things critical thinking is actually promoted by the active participation see when the learner centered approach is done means the learner is given more importance they will be more prone to participate in the discussion with them whenever it is going on right so that is how the critical thinking is activated or, th uh, or motive or yeah improved so that is a learner centered approach next one is cultural cultural relevance okay so inclusive education pedagogy also involves being sensitive because it's a teaching method the teacher has to be sensitive around the about the cultural background right uh, a large classroom will have people of different backgrounds different um, cultural background different religious background different language background so all these have to be kept in mind and the teacher has to be sensitive about these things okay and also while teaching they should adopt certain methods or they should adopt certain content and practices into the instructions keeping in mind about these differences or diversity in the culture okay so that in that make sure that ensures that the education is inclusive okay that ensures the education is inclusive and accessible okay inclusivity and accessibility of the education um, is ensured by the by being sensitive about the different kinds of culturally diverse classes fine so culturally rele relevant pedagogy actually has this identity and achievement so identity development is done in the classroom cultural heritage is kept in mind and it has to be respected multiple perspective has to be allowed into the classroom it is not uh, it should not be rigid okay so initially before all these uh, developments came into pedagogy the multiple perspectives was not encouraged instead the teacher used to say whatever it is there in the textbook and the different perspectives were not allowed later when the theories developed when the psychology was understood when the learner centered approach was taken up and the cultural relevance was understood in the pedagogical aspect multiple perspectives were welcomed into the classroom okay an affirmation for diversity public validation of home community cultures all these things were done next important point of culture relevant pedagogy is equity and excellence everyone were given equal access right and when the equal opportunities was given to all of the students obviously the expectations will rise right next is developmental appropriateness the learning styles teaching styles okay the motivation morale the engagement and collaboration everything everything is kept in mind and that has to be promoted in the classroom that whole child has to be taught okay whole child whole child has to be taught that means the skill development has to be done in the cultural context we have to bridge the home school and community when the cultural perspective comes the community also comes into play not only the home and school right so we have to bridge the home school and the community finally that is why when we consider the whole of the uh, whole of the community and whole of the child thereby the learning outcome outcome will improve okay because we are empowering the students through via their community similarly uh, whenever the child is taught there is a saying right if the child is taught the child will go and teach the mother the father and the siblings everyone so the whole community will be taught in that way right next one is student student teacher relationship whenever a cultural relevance pedagogy is done meaning the, the teacher is sensitive about the cultural aspect of the student and give certain certain kind of respect obviously the children or the student teacher relationship will improve there will be more caring kind of relations the interactions will be more better and the classroom atmosphere will also improve okay it will be a positive classroom atmosphere so all these things have to be kept in mind when we speak about cultural relevance fine 
Next is the reflective practice. Reflective practice in this pedagogy, it is about the teacher. Okay, it is a continuous improvement of teaching methods. See, self-assessment of the teacher has to be done. Feedback from the students, the teacher gets. So, what happens is that the teacher teaches. She or he self-assesses if the teaching method was good or in good or not. If they are satisfied with that or not, they assess themselves. Then they consider. Consider what? Consider means consider the feedback of the students. If the students are getting benefited from their teaching practices or not. Then if they are, then what happens? They practice the same teaching method again and again. Right? So this is a reflective cycle. They teach, they self-assess, get feedback, then practice. Okay, practice and if something is not working, they will modify their lessons, right? For more interaction, they'll see the whole thing. So, this is called a reflective cycle which has to be done in every teaching practice, okay? That basically improves the teaching method, okay? Self-assessment, then seeking feedback from the student and staying informed about new research. So, the teacher, okay, the teacher has to stay updated. They have to stay what? They have to stay updated throughout about new information, new research, new developments in the education system and also their their topics fine so this is about reflective practice next next important one is assessment and evaluation assessment and evaluation is very much critical okay in pedagogy it is also very much critical because it provides insight onto students learning progress okay so whether students whether students are understanding the teaching method and if any any modification has to be done or not the students progress can be maintained okay progress can be understood and if the, if the student is lacking somewhere, we can do something or do certain um, interventions to correct, rectify it, right? So, that is about the assessment and evaluation. So, similarly, we can do both kind of assessment, formative assessment, summative assessment. The other kinds are diagnostic assessment, then process-oriented assessment, everything is there. Evaluation, is can, evaluation can, also done, can also be done by um, judgmental, judgmental basis, judging the process or judging a student's progress etc okay so uh, we can guide the student if they are if they are not able to do certain things or they have to they have to improve in certain areas we can guide the student we can measure the, their progress via these methods of evaluation fine formative assessment can be done to adjust the instruction okay if any problems are there we can understand through the formative assessment how because the formative assessment is done along with the studies, along with the teaching, the immediate feedback is available through the formative assessment. But summative assessment can be done for final evaluation to completely place the student at the end of the term. We can place a student wherever their knowledge level starts. Okay, So that is about the assessment evaluation portion. Next one is about the little bit comparison between the pedagogy, andragogy and the uh, heutagogy. Fine. So, pedagogy I have already mentioned about the dependent learners. Okay, Immature dependent learners come under pedagogy. The maturity of learner is usually lesser. The immature learners who do not have any learning experience. Okay, Typically, the younger age group, maybe the adolescents or the youth group. They are they, uh, the people who require, require, the, uh, require significant guiding, guidance in the learning experience. So, they need the teachers. Otherwise, alone they cannot study andragogy but andragogy is what they are the adult learners okay heutagogy are also adult learners but the maturity is a little bit different heutagogy involves the people who ha who are highly mature okay who are highly mature they can do self-directed and self-guided but in case of andragogy they are independent they are adult learners but they need some kind of support okay they need some kind of support in the beginning Next is the um, student motivation, okay. Student motivation in the heutagogy, it is intrinsic motivation, okay. They want to learn by themselves, that is why they are learning something. In the andragogy, the motivation is there, both the kinds are there, intrinsic and extrinsic are there, but intrinsic, intrinsic is more, okay. It is usually, andragogy is usually done for career advancements, okay, career advancements and that is basically by intrinsic motivation. Both are there, but intrinsic is more. But in case of um, student motivation, in case of pedagogy, it is completely by external forces. Why do the st children study? They study because their parents told them to study. They are studying because they might be uh, promised about certain 
gift if they study they'll get get so and so if they pass in the exam they'll get uh, a cycle or something those gifts are usually promised to children right to make them study so extrinsic forces or extrinsic motivation play more into pedagogical portions right next one is a role of learner experience see learner experience in pedagogy is minimal okay a child doesn't have much experience experience of learning right so everything is new to them so learner experiences are minimal or actually zero in case of pedagogy but in andragogy they bring real world experiences right they are adults so they have seen life they have seen their profession wherever they have gone they get these experiences and they bring it bring that to the practice similarly heutagogy also has uh, learning experiences very much high higher than the andragogical aspect next coming to instructor role of instructor role of instructor is very much high in case of pedagogy they design the instructor designs the learning they design the content they design the process okay but in case of andragogy just guidance is provided all the other things are done by the learner in case of heutagogy instructor doesn't serve as much help they serve as a mentor or or coach okay but all the learning content learning content and process everything is chosen by the learner themselves instructor instructor has minimal um, role in case of heutagogy okay so in case of uh, in the modern pedagogical modern learning aspects this uh, online environment online environment doesn't help much in pedagogical right a lifestyle but not lifestyle learning style the online environment doesn't help much but in case of heutagogy and andragogy this well suited online environment is more suited for andragogical and heutagogical learning approaches so this was about different kinds of different differences between the pedagogy andragogy and heutagogy and also we learned about different concepts of uh, pedagogy we learned about the instructional strategies which have to be done okay why it is important also the learning theories different three kinds of learning theories we learned about here and how that helped in the foundation of pedagogy and also learner centered approach how it emphasizes on these individuality autonomy and critical thinking by encouraging the active participation because it is learner centered approach and also the cultural relevance how that is achieved and how that is important in creating a positive uh, class environment then is reflective practice that is done for the teachers that is done for teachers or instructors okay uh, teachers or instructors and how that helps in the improvement of uh, teaching strategies and also potentially the learning process as a whole next one is about the assessment evaluation both assessment and evaluation both the feedback feedback assessment and evaluation like the formative assessment summative assessment diagnostic assessment everything is done to improve to improve the instruction to improve the students progress and also to guide them okay so and also the comparison is done so next important topic is the meaning of pedagogy okay we did not deal with the meaning as such we just told about the concept what is pedagogy pedagogy is actually an art okay it is an art and science and the practice of teaching okay it deals with the theory and practice of teaching so it is an art it's a science and it is a practice of teaching what does it include it includes methods strategies and approaches in education okay all the methods all the strategies applied all the approaches that that, that can be taken to facilitate learning okay everything that that the teacher does to teach a student comes under pedagogy okay it's not only just delivery of the content okay just delivery of the content is not not enough there has to be interaction between a student and learner there has to be an importance given to the learning environment okay and there has to be influence of the societal and cultural context will be there in the teaching process okay all these things have to be understood and all these things are the core of uh, pedagogy pedagogical core can also be told as how the knowledge is transferred okay how the knowledge transfer occurs and how the lo uh, learners engage with that knowledge which is provided to them okay so it involves the understanding of needs of learner okay the needs of learner is taken into consideration then what happens based on the needs the teaching strategies or teaching methods will be designed okay on the basis of that the students are taught and finally what happens after teaching after teaching them the students will be assessed okay students will be assessed based on their outcomes okay so may 
this makes sure the learning has been effective okay all these things make sure that learning has been effective so remember uh, the key element of pedagogy is actually interaction okay first and foremost it will be content delivery obviously afterwards along with that there has to be a con con interaction between the teacher and the learner okay there has to be importance given to the learning environment in the environment means a class environment it can be the class it can be the social context it can be anyone okay so finally when the learning occurs in the classroom it will be spread to the societal and cultural context okay how the education influences the culture or the society that is also an aspect of pedagogy okay other features are there like the student center approach reflective practices differentiated instruction active learning inquiry based learning use of technology collaborative learning all these are also features of pedagogy which we will um learn here and there okay next is about the next is uh, about the examples okay what are the methods used for pedagogy okay methods used will be might be lectures okay or uh, discussions or group work means collaborative work can be use of visual aids okay teaching aids like visuals presentations textbooks digital resources everything can be used okay and the teacher has to make sure to create an environment for critical thinking okay means a question can be asked the the student has just to think student has to just think on it and bring up their own perspectives to the class and finally adapting to individual learning styles for inclusivity because we know there are different kinds of learners right different kinds of learners are there on the basis of that we have to adapt okay the teachers has to adapt to the individual learning style that that is because of the learner centered approach okay learner centered or the student centered approach that has to be considered while um, while teaching okay next important one is steps of pedagogical anal analysis okay so pedagogical analysis is a structured structured approach to enhancing the teacher learning process okay all the structured approach that can be done to enhance the teacher learning process via what via con content methods learn needs and assessment okay all the things we learned here on the basis of that we can analyze like right? we can analyze and we can enhance the teaching approach so basic two parts of pedagogical analysis is understanding the educational goals okay based on the goals strategies have to be developed right so remember every time when we develop strategies it has to align with the goals okay next important part of pedagogical analysis is assessing the learner needs okay finding what the learner needs to know okay and understanding where are the gaps in their knowledge and identify that gaps and tailor the instruction okay we have to tailor the instruction according to those gaps and also to engage these learners in the studying process okay that can be used by different methods which we will be dealing with here remember pedagogy is basically we learn about the approaches different learning models and different teaching strategies that can be adapted to teach next one the context okay the means the physical context where the learning is actually occurring and what are the other methods we by which we can en encourage the engagement that is game making or any cross curricular activities that can be done to improve the learning next one is about the programming languages how the um yeah programming language means how the subject is delivered it can be via visual blocks or it can be via text okay how it is given to the student how the information knowledge is given to the student next is engagement okay how engagement is improved it can be via group projects it can be via paired program okay pair means a group of two collaborative projects are actually a larger group now we will learn about each of the steps of pedagogical analysis first foremost step is about the learning objectives we have to identify where the uh, or what the student has to learn and how the student has to learn that is the first step to clearly define what the learner is expected to achieve by the end of a lesson or end of the term what the student should know he okay, must know things so uh, there is there is a certain mnemonic for the uh learning objectives not only here in every aspect this particular mnemonic can be used whenever objectives or goals come into play okay this is smart goal smart means s for specific m for measurable a for achievable r for relevant and t for time bound okay smart criteria or smart goals okay these actually help in planning okay this help in planning the 
activities or strategies or assessments okay in the teaching process so remember we have to identify identify means first and foremost step of teaching or pedagogical analysis is actually to define what the learners are expected to achieve by the end means to understand the learning objective and clearly put down the learning objective okay because on the base of this only we will now create the strategies okay so next important step is content analysis content analysis actually once the learners objective the goals are set up next step is actually analyze analyze what analyze the content that has to be covered so in this one because uh, for example uh, for a, when we take a medical system the entire respiratory system has to be covered right in physiology while speaking about physiology the entire respiratory system has to be covered so that is the major content that has to be covered but it cannot be covered in a single day obviously right so what the teacher can do the teacher can break down the whole subject matter into manageable unit okay so might be first a uh, smaller unit might be a little bit of anatomy second might be the muscles of respiration third might be the cellular respiration portion yeah then comes the respiratory unit all those things so we will be dividing the whole big subject matter into smaller manageable units and in those manageable units we'll identify the key concept okay key concept will be identified facts will be identified and also we will be understanding or uh, knowing or finding out what skills are there in the particular content that the student has to learn for example in the respiratory system the student has to know or learn the skill of or learn the skill of auscultation right auscultation is skill that the student has to learn by the end of studying respiratory system so uh, the teacher will understand what are the key concept means the student has to understand about the respiratory system what are the facts they'll have to know the process of respiration they have to know about the types of respiration they have to know about the muscles involved in respiration so all those things uh, that they come under the facts then come under the uh, then comes the skills that is actually the, the method of auscultation the process of auscultation and how that can be done and all those things by the end of a counter analysis all these things have to be broken down and the student and the teacher has to understand these and these these things have to be taught to the student right and then um yeah then we'll organize this content and then it will be given to the student for the studying okay by it can be via visual aids or it can be via text okay so these are different methods methods by which the content can be analyzed and it is broken down into simpler or smaller parts so the teacher also finds it easier students also find it less boring next moving on to learner analysis okay learner analysis is actually understanding the learner see every class has different kinds of learner which diverse with diverse background diverse knowledge diverse learning style diverse motivations and there might be barriers also okay all these have to be learned the teacher has to know about the student okay the knowledge learning style motivation barriers everything has to be un un understood and considered so that the teacher can tailor their instruction differentiate instruction right so teacher has to tailor their instruction strategies and instruction method on the basis of their understanding of the student so it can be by asking or uh, or creating a better rapport with the students so the students will open up the teacher right so that is how the teacher understands about the student or analyzes the student then finally the proper proper strategy can be made next moving on to the selection of teaching method now we know about the learner we know about the content we know about the objectives now what teacher can do they can select the teaching method they can select the resources okay they can select the resources and the teaching methods on the basis of this content and learner analysis the teacher selects this appropriate teaching methods remember it should be appropriate obviously based on the objective okay it should align with the content and the learner needs and the objectives right so what are these resources resources can be lectures they can be discussion they can be multimedia they can be hands on activities everything that the teacher can find which will be useful for them in the teaching process okay so all these thing should align remember whenever we are speaking about the instructions it should align with the instruction or strategy it should align with the objective remember that okay and next one 
uh, we can engage the students via their hands on activities act activities right so that will involve students more when we involve students more the active participation will be more and retention will also be higher leading to better learning outcomes so the teacher can combine all those things combine the lectures combine the discussions multimedia so that all kinds of learners are uh, all all kinds of learners find it helpful for them to study right so that will increase the engagement also right so the teaching methods and resources are done next what happens after teaching what happens assessment is done right so assessments as we have already mentioned assessments are what kind it can be formative it can be summative both kinds of tools can be done okay why these assessments are done assessments are done to find out if the teacher was successful in finding if the objectives have been achieved or not learning objective means a, the earlier example by the end of the session was respiratory system taught or understood by the students or not so how will we understand that by finding out by asking questions or by uh, getting feedback right so the assessment can be done formative assessment can be done between the class or summative assessment can be done in the end of the class so ongoing feedback can be done and final evaluation can also be done final evaluation comes for summative and on, ongoing feedback is a formative assessment both can be done to understand where the student is at um which level the student is at to understand their knowledge okay or knowledge which they have acquired or if at all there are any problems the, student, the teacher can understand and provide instructions or provide uh, any rectification if it is required okay so assessments can be formative and summative what are certain examples of, of assessment it can be quizzes it can be projects it can be concept maps okay the, the student can be given uh, create certain projects so that certain parts of the topic is also covered and also the, the student the teacher understands if the student has gotten a grasp of the topic or not okay that is about assessment planning next month next one is about the implementation and reflection all this have till now everything was planning right it was selection of teaching method also comes in the planning stage learner it is initial stage before planning then content analysis also the identification learning these all are the planning aspect of it now everything has to be implemented okay the teacher finally delivers the lesson okay implements the planning plan teaching strategy whichever they have plan it might be a lecture it might be a course work okay it might be an multimedia every resources which they have got she or he tailors those instruction into the students that is the delivering the lesson then after the lesson is given what happens they can evaluate they can evaluate if the learning objective have has been uh, achieved or not so that is the evaluating of success so usually done by formative or summative assessment then reflecting and improving means a teacher analyzes themselves their own teaching process if it has worked well or not okay if it has worked well good otherwise she or he can adjust okay adjust further for the future lessons so that is about a reflection and improvement so these are the basic things or steps okay basic steps of pedagogical analysis pedagogical analysis is actually how the teacher creates a lesson plan and how she or he implements okay how the lesson plan is con in implement or constructed lesson plan is constructed by identifying the learning ob objective by analyzing the content analyzing the learner okay then selecting the teaching methods based on the content and learner analysis okay teaching methods and resources then planning assessments okay beforehand only they have to plan the assessment now all these five steps have to be implemented by what by delivering the lesson after the lesson after the lesson is done the success has to be evaluated via assessments then the teacher what she does is she reflects on their her own performance if the student has understood or not based on the assessment she'll understand right based on the assessment she'll understand if the student has understood the topic or not if the student has understood if the student has scored uh, scored good or the feedback had been good then the teacher practices the same method again and again till she is well versed in the certain topic then if the assessment is not good if the feedback is not good then she or he can adjust again okay she or he can, he can adjust for the future classes thereby improving themselves so that was about the pedagogical analysis next important topic is the concepts of critical pedagogy okay critical pedagogy has certain concepts see critical pedagogy actually deals with philosophy of education okay 
philosophy edu education that emphasizes the need for teaching for social change okay so remember education always can lead to social change before what happened before when only the education was only allowed for high class people means the kings and queens everyone of their strata people the uh, people with less uh, means less fortunate people did not have the access to education means they would not get in enough knowledge right so when that happened all the atrocities were given to the lower class people means the people who were not that fortunate so they used to bear the whole thing but once they started getting educated okay then the reform started all the people who were the key criteria for this reformation all the renaissance spirit people okay everyone who led an ed- a revolution they were well educated people well educated not only means degrees it means knowledgeable people okay without knowledge of a certain thing we will always remain ignorant okay so unless and until the student or the paper people know what is right and wrong they won't be able to rectify the wrongs right so so to rectify the wrongs they have to have education right so that is a basic philosophy behind critical pedagogy means the application of pedagogy or need for teaching to be a tool okay teaching can be or education can be a tool for social change so this was actually um, brought up it was actually brought up by a brazilian educator okay brazilian educator called paulo paulo ferry okay paulo ferry so we we'll learn about him little bit later this person has challenged many traditional power structures on in education and uh, he uh, encouraged the students to question okay question everything so th- those um, were brought up by this particular person okay so now coming to the concepts of critical pedagogy first is empowerment okay empowerment see whenever we uh, give proper pedagogy means proper teaching is done it will always improve it it will always improve and encourage the student right increase student in active learning whenever active learning is improved then what happens they go for um, critical thinking right active learning obviously promotes critical thinking so when that happens critical thinking once we start thinking right once a person starts thinking he'll keep on thinking various things come and come into play right from a smaller to smaller aspect to a bigger aspect okay it can it can widely go into the pers- from personal aspect to social realities everything can be questioned okay that is the critical thinking process that is a that is how critical thinking works they can they can question everything from their smaller doubts to their existence their experiences everything will be questioned okay so it promotes this uh, empowerment empowerment through the critical pedagogy it actually what is told does is it promotes that the idea okay it promotes the idea that education should should not just transmit knowledge but also in, inspire action for social justice okay it should inspire the student for social justice that is how the empowerment becomes a major concept of critical pedagogy okay when we promote critical thinking when we promote active learning proper active learning that will promote critical thinking whenever critical thinking is promoted that will at the end it will promote or it will include the empowerment fine so unless and until we know our rights we won't know right that is the basic knowledge about empowerment now dialogic learning dialogic learning is uh, the key or the central aspect of critical pedagogy okay so what happens is that initially there used to be only a teacher to student transmission okay there was that that was a one way process now when the critical pedagogy came into play what happens there is a two way okay two way street education became a two way street the teacher teaches the student and te- the student asks questions and the student also has certain doubts they can clear up right so it is a exchange between the teacher and student so both the teacher and student learn from each other okay this is called as dialogic approach that when this occurs no when this occurs then only the critical thinking comes up okay that then only the critical thinking comes up and other than critical thinking it also okay it also en- um, encourages the collaborative learning okay 
collaborative learning also is encouraged because whenever there is a discussion going on not only one student if there are two or three major students are, many students are there everyone will take part in that discussion right that is how the teaching or uh, should take place critical te critical pedagogical teaching should take place and that is a two way exchange between the teacher and the students okay when that occurs critical learning or critical thinking is encouraged and collaborative learning is encouraged so that is basically happening in open discussions okay in the basic setup it is open discussion or um, collaborative discussion settings where the students are allowed to voice allowed and encouraged to voice out their opinions their assumptions or their questions their debates okay all those things come under dialogic learning okay next is about uh, next before going into the next uh, next concept we'll learn about uh, different terminologies about banking education and problem posing education banking education it is just teacher teaching the student okay nothing much only the teacher teaching the student and the teacher is actually who is indifferent to political and uh, socio cultural context okay the teacher doesn't uh, bother about all those aspects she or he just teaches okay just a problem solver they come to the class give the lecture and go okay and the learner is actually passive they are more of passive nature okay there is bank in banks what happen we go deposit on our money and come back the people who are sitting in the bank they are not bothered with anything else they just have the work to deposit money okay they just have to deposit money that, that is the only process over there right so that becomes boring and monotonous okay remember that banking education is actually deposit making process the lecturer or the teacher is just a um just a problem solver she or he doesn't um take part in any kind of political or socio cultural context okay everything is indifferent to her then comes the role of students who are actually not involved as such they are just learner they just come study and go nothing else okay and the task or strategies are usually a little bit monotonous okay and educational teaching education is actually passive because students are monotonous there is no exchange occurring so that becomes a static education okay and remember it is the mugging up uh, by hearting style everything comes under this banking education this parrot like me uh, memorization okay all these things come under banking education now there is another kind which was given by paulo ferre okay paulo ferre okay he mentioned or he contrasted this particular banking education with this kind of problem posing education means the type of education where the critical consciousness in, is increased okay here what happens a teacher poses the problem okay he or she coordinates the discussion okay discussion dialogues where the teacher is interested in uh, the sensitive topics of the politics or social any kinds of sensitive topics and he or she puts up all these things in front of the students so the students can actively discuss when students are actively discuss discussing it becomes a dynamic process right the students also learn from the teacher and vice versa the students and the teacher learn together and from each other right so when that happens it becomes more motivating and engaging and this always fosters deep and critical understanding okay that is called as problem posing education where dialogic learning is done and this encourages or increases the critical thinking okay critical consciousness that is the next thing a next concept of critical pedagogy where problem posing education is done where the students will actively engage with the problems okay it is not just a mere knowledge transfer instead it will be an exchange between the student and teacher and there will be more emphasis on the sensitive political socio cultural aspect of the world fine so critical thinking and creative thinking is always encouraged here it can be done via debates it can be done via discussions okay debates discussion everything can be done where the students can pose their questions pose their problems and make a um yeah make a presentation it can be a presentation over a contemporary issue for example now elections are elections have been going on right in us so that can be a um, topic of discussion where the students can pose a certain things right Uh, they can be leftist party they can be rightist party all those discussions can take part take place and 
critical thinking is encouraged here the students form their own ideas that is a basic understanding and basic uh, need of this critical pedagogy okay so it is kind of like making the students ready for the world next important one is conscientization conscientization the father of conscientization is the is paulo ferry he um emphasized on the particular critical consciousness okay conscientization also are also called as critical consciousness he um, he focus on the importance okay importance uh, of developing this critical consciousness okay so what is this conscientization is a process of becoming aware of the contradictions existing in the in themselves and in the society okay the people should be conscientious about their own um, goods and bad things and also they have to be uh, yeah they have to be aware of their society also the place where they live in the society labs aspect social political and economic aspects of uh, aspects of the world and the injustice that is occurring okay so that is called as conscientization fine right? this is a process of developing a deep awareness deep awareness of the uh, social political and economic injustice okay when that happens when they know about these things they can challenge the oppression right this is actually making the education a tool for fighting the oppression okay that can be done if and only if the the student knows about the uh, knows or is aware of the political social and the economic injustice that is happening in the world it is happening right everywhere it is happening so unless and until they are educated they that um, they won't know about these things right so after knowing after developing the certain critical consciousness what happens they can recognize them when if they see it around them and they have to or they can form various strategies to resist that kind of oppressions okay so basically conscientization it actually encourages conscientization encourages a social awareness okay they analyzes the social structure that impact the daily life and they also resist if there is any wrong occurring okay so that is about conscientization the father of conscientization is actually paulo ferry okay paulo ferry so that is about conscientization next is about resistance to oppression by understanding the conscientization by understand having a critical consciousness by knowing what is right and wrong by what no having a awareness of the social political and economic problems in the in the world he or she can have a capacity to resist oppression okay have a capacity to resist op oppression so that can be done by promoting social justice okay how that happens is encouraging the student for active participation encouraging the student for participating actively in equality in social change okay making the uh, students a better person by making them a better person they will be actively made to actively participate in this um, equality and social change they may be advocate for these things okay and they encourages okay this particular critical pedagogy encourages resistance to all forms of oppression okay in in with re, in respective okay irrespective of any kinds of oppression whether it is happening to them or their neighbor they will have a uh, understanding of it and they encourage okay they will be encouraged to resist them okay so with that all the marginalized communities will be um, will be benefited by them because it will promote right it will promote all the diverse diverse identities and struggles when they are studying about social justice obviously the marginalized community come into their perspective they'll understand from their own perspective and try to voice out opinions voice out their resistance for them okay so basically this is a socialistic a uh, mindset where the people are working for the others and finally finally the justice of the whole system so that is about the major things in critical pedagogy critical pedagogy may basically is actually the empowerment of the people students by the process or encouraging the critical thinking aspect by how the critical thinking is occurring critical thinking is occurring because of a dialogic learning it is a two way exchange is happening in between the teachers and the student via the collaborative learning via the open discussions by the open debates okay so that will increase a problem posing education system that will encourage the creative and critical thinking 
and increasing the conscientization in the students when the con consciousness or the conscientization is more in the students they will resist the oppression finally for the betterment of the marginalized community and also the students okay students as a whole when students as a whole is meant means a society as a whole will improve by critical pedagogy okay all these uh, main things are told and spoken by paulo ferre who was a portuguese educator okay next is about the development the history and development of critical pedagogy right so here we will be de dividing the pedagogy in different key stages will be starting from ancient pedagogy ancient pedagogy is actually the medieval or the ancient civilizations like of uh, rome okay roman and greek civilizations where the pedagogy was primarily concerned with just transmit transmitting knowledge right transmitting knowledge or gen uh, moral values from one generation to other right it used to occur in rome greece even in india and even the egyptian culture it used to occur right it was directly transferred from one generation to another generation and remember this ancient pedagogy usually was available only for the elite initially ancient pedagogy where the elite were the one who were given these instructions remember and the other one was teaching was conducted via oral instructions right in gurukul system right remember in india gurukul system used to be followed where the main teacher he used to give lessons to their disciples or else text used to also be there for example scrolls used to be there in uh, greek school of teaching and egyptian also had scrolls and tablets and the same way in the system also had scrolls okay uh, scrolls and little classical text used to be there okay learning was primarily oral emphasizing literature rhetoric and philosophy all this philosophical thinking were more encouraged in case of in the ancient pedagogical time okay so basically moral and intellectual development and also knowledge transmission from one generation to another was done in ancient pedagogy fine so socratic method socratic method means critical thinking like a dialogue it can be like the major educator major teacher used to put a doubt or put a question in the group of students and they used to they used to be made uh, to think on the particular thing encourage they were encouraged to ask question they were encouraged to think critically that thereby the philosophical aspect of their mind used to develop okay that is about ancient pedagogy next coming into medieval period medieval period what happened in the medieval period church came into existence okay churches came into existence and they um, had a religious they had major power over the teaching okay they had major power on education they were controlling the education was largely contro controlled by the church where the focus was more on hum religious instruction okay not the philosophical aspect instead it was it was shifted into religious instruction okay religious focus was there in the medieval time okay then came the renaissance period in the renaissance period classical learning and humanistic education okay humanistic education where the in individual potential and broad knowledge and the classics all those things were developed in the renaissance period remember the medieval period it is mostly on religious focus renaissance be brought up the humanistic education where the individual potential and broad knowledge knowledge based or um, broad based education was developed okay so again in the medieval period the uh, rhetoric and philosophy grammar everything was reduced and then the in the renaissance period it came back okay all the philosophy, philosophy critical thinking literature that was reduced in the medieval period but when the uh, when the renaissance period came up it came back okay all the rhetoric Uh, learning the grammar the philosophy everything came in the renaissance spirit okay then came the modern or enlightenment enlightenment and the modern pedagogy about this we have certain other people or influential thinkers all the behaviorist which we have learned in the initial videos about um, john locke john jack rousseau okay these two people are the influential thinkers of the modern pedagogy modern pedagogy is actually 1800s to 1900s so these individuals or these thinkers gave 
certain theories and also th certain methods of or steps of learning which we'll be dealing with a little bit later other than that the behaviorists like uh, Lev Vygotsky and Jean Piaget they also came up in this particular modern pedagogical time okay so in the modern pedagogy we saw rise of what rise of rationalism okay rationalism where education became a tool for progress okay tool for progress and personal freedom okay tool for progress and personal or individual freedom okay that is where the thinkers thinkers with like john locke and okay john jack uh, rossio they advocated the education aligned with child's natural growth okay as the child grew the type of education had to change that is what they mentioned okay so child centered approaches emphasis on the experience on the natural development and critical thinking was emphasized in the enlightenment of modern pedagogy okay for example john locke john locke was a theorist okay influential theorist in the modern pedagogical time where he developed certain theories is that the child doesn't have a capacity to get an idea by himself instead they have to obtain experiences once they obtain experiences then only they'll get an idea otherwise the idea cannot be found by themselves okay that is what john locke had mentioned okay john locke mentioned that idea cannot occur in the absence of a in the absence of a experience okay then came coming into the theory of rossio okay rossio was another person who mentioned even though he had found lots of um, backlash for his particular story he had published a certain story okay certain book that is called as emil okay emil on education this was the book published by rossio okay this person john jack rossio he published this certain book where he mentioned about different stages five stages of development okay five stages of development and also five stages where the um, children can be properly taught okay this book this certain book tells a story of a boy from the early childhood till the late adulthood okay how the learning has to be given and how that learning has to be influ uh, learning influences the child so first one the early childhood the child is born then what happens that the this stage what happens is that the parents okay the parents of the child has to ensure that the child develops physically okay only the mother should feed the baby because she naturally loves him more, more than anyone else. All these theories was given by this person, uh, Rocio. Then what happened? Then the next stage, boyhood stage. In the boyhood stage, what that is from the age of 7 to 9, here the child should be taught or educated to perfect his senses. Okay, perfect his senses because this is the time the where the senses will be receptive to all kinds of information. So, all the information should be perceived correctly. To perceive the information correctly, the senses should work properly, right? So, good judgment and uh, proper senses. That has to be developed in the boyhood stage. That is age 7 to 9. When instead of book, giving books, okay? Instead of giving books, which used to be practiced then. Instead of giving the books, instead of that, they should be allowed to conduct natural experiments outside the student or the uh, the instead of putting the child in the, into the school they have to be let out in the nature and natural ex experiences should be attained from the student uh, from by the child the playground activities they have to undergo they have to do certain games or play certain games conduct experiences experiments okay here what happens is that the child learns to tell right from wrong by experiences the consequences of action for example the child is playing outside he kicks a dog the dog will bite back so the child learns that kicking a dog is not right throwing stones at the dog is not right so he learns by himself right from his own experiences then came the third stage sorry then came the third stage that is pre-adolescent pre-adolescent was the was from age of 10 to 9 here the child go, goes to people he learns how to reason he learns to con um, converse with other people right he acquires learn real language uh, sorry real knowledge he acquires the knowledge from the tutor right so uh, here what happens is that because the student has certain 
experiences from his boyhood he will know what he wants to learn the student or the uh, the child himself will understand what he wants to learn if the uh, child wants to learn history he will learn history right so thereby he'll understand the certain things and also language will also develop by conversing with other people right so that happens in pre adolescent period that is age 10 to 12 then coming to adolescent period okay adolescent period the main thing is about the sentiment okay sentiment he knows about the um emotions how he is un he is able to understand complex emotions his true compassion everything is learned in the adolescent period that is from age 13 to 19 okay the teenage group so the child learns the complex ideas and then what happens then he can be he can go into adulthood and mingles with the society people of society and finally leads a respectable lifestyle so that is the basic no, uh, basic thing told about Rossio. he faced a uh, lots of backlash for this thing we'll go a little de we'll deviate from the, uh, from the topic a little bit this particular person who told the responsibility it based with with the parents in the early childhood he mentioned that the mother has to take care of the child he has uh, she has to feed the child properly and the second stage the boyhood stage where the father takes the child to the uh, nature and makes him experience all those things the pre-adolescent where the child specifies what he wants to learn and the he gets that kind of learning everything is actually instructor based right basically the influence of parents are there but this um, uh, rocio he had five children and he had put all these children into um, an orphanage okay that is a problem why this particular person did not get maximum or um, people disagreed with his ideas okay, and called him a hypocrite because he had sent all his five children to the orphanages and he is putting up all these theories about the influences of parents on the child's development etc right so that is the one thing this was not um, accepted by the society at that period of time so remember rocio mainly gave about um, uh, gave information about development stages five stages and how the learning methods learning uh, method has to be tailored according to those stages natural learning going into the nature and teaching himself the student has student no the child has to learn by himself ex by experience okay and he has to protect the childhood and in integrity by understanding the books should not be given initially itself child should be made to understand the nature before understanding the books okay then uh, he had a critique about the formal education he was against the traditionalized schooling okay instead he wanted to uh, further explore the nature okay by exploring the nature of the uh, nature of the children and their mindset okay and autonomy was given if the child wants to learn certain thing he was given or he was given the opportunity to learn those things right and along with that supporting exploration they he um, believed in letting the child explore freely okay if the child is curious about something he is allowed to cater to that curiosity okay so all these things were rocio's educational views okay then coming into industrial age okay when the industrial age came the educational system still developed okay still developed when it in the industrial age what happened is was educational system was transformed into an industry okay industrial age it bring um, lots of society changes okay and um, the societies became more industrialized everyone went to the societies okay when uh, everyone went to the industries to work so when the industries came into play they needed managers right so formal education okay formal education needed more was given more importance here okay um, so there was a growing need for formal education that could prepare this individual for demands of modern life so because of life was getting modernized because of the industrialization there was a more in more need for this formal education okay and here there was an the importance of experiential learning okay experiencing and learning learning by doing so preparing the students for real world challenges this kind of all the things are already tailored you just have to go study and come okay study by various kinds mainly studying by doing in the industry what happens all the workers do and study right all the practical learning is um, given in the industry so similarly 
in the in education system also same thing happened learning by doing and this period this is where the progressive thinkers came okay progressive thinkers like john dewey john dewey was another progressive thinker who promoted interactive progress okay interactive process of learning was given by john dewey so we we'll learn about his process one thing first and foremost he uh, initially what happened the students were going into the class studying whatever the teacher taught and coming back that's it that was the only way of the um, education in the initial initial period okay in the ancient in the medieval in the uh, yeah, ancient medieval and even in the modern pedagogy that that was the process okay but in the school in the schools john dewey bought certain progressive things okay progressive education was brought up by him so here what happened he found out the lacune found out the lacune in the educational system he understood learning by doing that had to be implemented he implemented discussion okay discussion in the classrooms that was improved okay learning by doing is actually called as what it is called as experiential learning okay that was developed by dewe okay so he observed that the children would learn better when they are actively engaged obviously right if if we are made to do something we learn it better than just reading the theory so practical aspect of learning was encouraged because the engagement of the students were more or active okay in the um experiential learning because the the students were more immersed in the present okay because whenever we are studying the just, just theory we will think if this will come for exam or not this will uh, come for 5 marks or 10 marks or 20 marks how will we write this that is what we have in mind when we study a theory only but when we are practically engaged when we are doing a certain experiments when we are learning by doing what happens we are more immersed in doing the thing when we are when we are doing that when we are conducting an experiment we are completely engrossed in that right so we are there we are present in the present itself not in the future not in the exam right so similarly he encouraged the learning by doing or experiential learning aspect then came the discussion discussions uh discussions usually prepare the student for a democratic society to live in a democratic society the decisions are based right decisions arguments everything is made right so for that the discussions were put up means discussions were included in the teaching methods so thereby debates were included so in the debates what happens the child learns to formulate their ideas right they have an idea they formulate formulate the idea they will put up in the group in the group or the yeah in the group discussions when that happens other children will put their arguments if it is reasonable they'll they'll um, get to develop their critical thinking okay critical thinking is understood and it is developed in the discussion that is a importance these learning by doing discussions the next one is interactive okay interactive method is actually not with each other not only with each other with the in environment also okay that is essential for the learning process because education here the dewey john dewey emphasized that education is an experience okay and that will change from time to time just passive learning is not good okay passive learning will not help the student in any way instead they should actively interact with the nature interact with each other they should interact with the learning process then only they will be better similarly it should be interdisciplinary okay so continuity okay continuity is critical to comprehension right so whenever there is an interdisciplinary education what happens is that if the child is good in maths and good in botany or uh, science they have to integrate it with each other okay the language and arts or language and maths or language or biology all or science all have to be integrated together then and then only there will be a complete understanding okay then only they will get in a complete understanding okay that is what is meant by interdisciplinary learning and that also was promoted by john dewey okay because continuity has to be there otherwise a child will learn max and uh, from the max class they will go to the biology class and completely forget about the max that is not right so that will not yeah that was that is not um, good for the future also and that is not good for the whole teaching process also and 
the learning by connecting these different subjects and different aspects of the subject is important that was told by john dewey okay so john dewey also had, did not have a better because his theory was also not accepted at the time it came out then it was accept, accepted but at the time it was not accepted either next coming into contemporary pedagogy that is about today's pedagogy what happens is that today this pedagogy will it is going on it evolving right it is influenced by what influenced by technology right influenced by technology it is influenced by neuroscience because in neuroscience various experience experiments is being conducted in psychology different experiences and experiments are being conducted that can be applied to pedagogy again different cultural studies advancements are going on there also right so the focus is on the inclusivity right focus is on inclusivity differentiation and the integration of these digital tools which is there in the society and that is integrated into the teaching okay also there is an emotional learning aspect also focus on the emotional and social learning what happens here is the global citizenship the emotional learning and social learning that is emphasized here and the need for education to address this complex societal challenges that is dealt in challenge challenges and issues is dealt with the contemporary pedagogy for example uh, maybe the abortion rights maybe the nuclear wars or maybe the ongoing wars in various countries all those things have to be addressed by the society as such right all these things can be done with education okay ignorance and education is completely opposite aspects the people who are educated who means the who are knowledgeable they will be lesser ignorant they will be less ignorant right ignorant people who have lesser knowledge of about various aspect they will just follow the crowd what we need is actually critical thinkers who who are educated about certain things who are knowledgeable knowledgeable about all these things all about society to resist against the oppression or correct the wrongs in the whole world okay whole society that is the major thing about the contemporary pedagogy okay where blended learning approaches can be taken with the uh, technological help okay personalized learning approaches can be taken and finally the diverse learners okay the the world is rapidly changing thereby the learners are also becoming diverse right so by thereby all these things can be addressed and well maintained or corrected or rectified if it is required now all these things we have learned different kinds of pedagogy of the history and evolution of pedagogy is learned next portion is about the need of pedagogy what is the need of pedagogy okay what is the importance first and foremost the importance of pedagogy is the education pedagogy is the backbone of education okay the good teaching pedagogy means what teaching methods right unless and until the teaching is good the learning will will not be better okay the, for bettering the learning the teaching has to be good okay the approach to the learning and instruction has to be thoughtful and intentional then only the learning will become learning experience will be meaningful right the learning outcome will be better only if the pedagogy if the teaching is good right now coming into the major importance we'll just mention here with the pedagogy what is pedagogy learning the theory and practice of teaching right so with that we will understand how to design the instructions okay how to design the instructions the framework of designing the instruction is via the pedagogy okay that provides a framework how it is done it is done by effective by making it more effective and more engaging okay more intentional when it is becoming more in, intentional for example the teacher is putting up certain assignments to make the engagement more better assignments are usually it can be project work project work usually encourages collaborative learning so it is intentional to increase collaboration and when collaboration is more engagement will be more right so all these instructional design every time you have to remember it should align with the objective okay objective has to be accomplished with the design so in that way it can become more intentional to increase the collaborative learning and also whenever we have a plan okay instructional design is basically lesson plan okay how the lesson will go forth so if we have a lesson plan what happens the haphazard teaching will reduce okay it will be lesser just without going in just without any goals or without any proper understanding of the topic we the teacher cannot just go into the class and take something and come right instead 
if they are prepared enough if they are prepared enough there won't be any ineffectiveness there cannot be any haphazard teaching okay whenever there is an ineffective or haphazard teaching the learning becomes disengaged the learners or the students become disinterested the teacher is only not coming prepared to the classroom what the students will learn right so similarly the instructional design have to be proper and have to be intentional and it should be engaging to improve the learning outcome next one adversing di diverse learner needs because the learners are diverse from different backgrounds from from different learning styles and different abilities right so the teacher has to recognize them and has to tailor the instructions or differentiate instructions means tailoring instructions according to the student right so that all the students can have easy access and engage with the material similarly right it can be by collaborating with mixed activities like visual auditory and kinesthetic all the uh, learning methods in a similar teaching way okay in the same teaching method including all these aspects so that all the students present in the class gets the benefit of teaching of of learning right so that provides equity or equitable access of learning or the, of the class to all the diverse group of students okay next importance of pedagogy is fostering critical thinking right critical pedagogy we have already learned right so critical pedagogy is what it is a di di uh, dialogue learning right dialogue based learning where what happens is that the exchange occurs between teacher and student so instead of just transmission of actual knowledge it encourages student to think critically okay think critically then what critically thinking ask questions okay if they have any doubts or if they have any kinds of questions in their mind they have to ask okay they have to ask and they can solve problems by help or without help okay so it encourages students the pedagogy as such it actually transmits the knowledge in ways other than that it encourages the students to think critically to ask questions okay to ask questions and solve problems all these come under higher order of thinking skills okay it will it will be essential in increasing the higher order thinking skills which is very much essential for the 21st century because the world is improving world is developing we are at the need of this high order thinking skills of people who can ask questions who can think critically everywhere in the interviews there are aptitude questions right they check for these things the ability to think critically the ability to solve the problems so that is where the pedagogy helps by instructing or uh, yeah by designing the instructions in such a ways that the critical thinking is encouraged by the problem solving things uh, problem solving skills are encouraged okay next one is about enhancing student engagement and motivation by making the structure or instructional design more engaging what happens the student and uh, the student engagement will be higher right when the students student engagement is higher what happens the active learning will be higher when the active learning is high that makes the student more better in their learning outcome also and also their critical thinking aspect okay so all these things means the active learning strategies the real world act applications okay real world applications um, like putting scenarios for uh, group discussions or scenarios for debates okay all these interactive activities that can be put up or that can be conducted in the classroom which will make the learning experience better interesting okay so thereby what happens is that the students will always be motivated motivated to perform better and they'll have more um ability to retain whatever they have learned okay whenever we interact and learn whenever we engage in a certain uh, process and learn the learning uh, or the topic has to have a better retention in our mind okay that makes the learning more meaningful for the student and thereby the learning outcome outcome will be better and that will make the student um, excel in their real life also okay so that is about the student engagement and also remember the student engagement can even be improved or enhanced by certain techniques like gamification or rewarding or enforcement techniques that can be done to in, in, encourage the students motivation or also to enhance the students engagement in the classroom next is about promoting lifelong learning okay so here if we make the class better 
okay if the class is better if the students are able to think critically or think um, yeah think critically and if the interaction is better then what happens beyond the content the student will want to learn the student will have more doubts about certain thing which can go outside the learning strata also so when the classes are better when the teacher is properly teaching that instills a love for learning okay love for learning in the student themselves okay that is by development of the uh, critical thinking skill by developing the self regulation skill by instilling a growth mindset okay growth mindset in the student okay all these thing improve the students uh, in, uh, engagement and thereby finally at the end what happens they'll be obviously and hope uh, lifelong they will be curious curious to certain things curious curiosity to learn curiosity to um, understand certain things okay lifelong learning process will continue they will become more adaptable and they will be become uh, they will become more resilient in certain challenges okay the school is actually a actually a smaller world okay smaller um, model of the whole world so thereby the stu the student is made ready for the world challenges or uh, challenges faced in the actual world fine so all these things are done via pedagogy itself next one is supporting effective assessment okay through this uh, proper instructive management or instruct instruction design and in the instruction design one aspect is about the assessment okay planning the assessments or uh, planning the assessments can be done by keeping in mind about the goals okay remember the questions that has to be asked in the exams have to be based on the goals itself it cannot deviate from the topic it should not be out of syllabus okay the term out of syllabus is actually this one it should be aligned aligned with the goals of the um teaching okay next one is about formative and summative approaches all these things means the guides in guides instruction and monitors prog progresses right guides instruction is actually the formative through formative assessment and summative approaches uh, give the progress okay Pro progress of student can be monitored via the summative approaches okay and remember these assessment have to be fair and valid all the students have to be assessed in the same way okay and also based on the different um, type of learning different assessments can be given but the criteria for assessment have to be same thereby giving a equitable access equitable access and equitable and fair uh, evaluation to the students learning okay like using quizzes using peer peer reviews using e portfolios or using uh, assignments written assignments or um projects okay or experiments all these things are kinds of assessments that assesses the students understanding about a certain topic which has been taught and remember it should always align with the objective which was initially um initially put up by the teacher okay for themselves and for the students next important portion is the formulation of teaching objectives okay formulating teaching objectives in teaching learning is actually the core aspect of teaching okay first step of the teaching of pedagogy is pedagogical analysis is what it is the formulating the objectives okay so we learned about the smart criteria and everything in detail we'll be learning now okay so these are the major things and also other than the smart criteria there is one more about the bloom's taxonomy which already have been um dealt with in the previous videos please go back and see to that so yeah the smart criteria have to be achieved okay have to be um fulfilled when making up a objective okay while creating or while putting up an objective or learning goals okay learning objective while creating a learning objective these criteria has to be fulfilled okay what is smart smart s is for specific m is for measurable a is for attain attainable r for r for relevant and t for time bound this is a smart criteria remember s means specific means a learning objective should clearly define what the student will be able to know able to do okay we can't put a goal of um, solving complex equations in a fifth standard student right that cannot be a goal instead simple divisions or multiplication that is the goal for teaching a fifth standard student but the complex equations can be done for a person or for a student who is learning integrations and differentiations that is possibly in the 
लेवेंत और टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड ओके मिनिमम टेंथ और लेवेंथ स्टैंडर्ड सो दिस लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव शुड बी इन इन लाइन विद द स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो ओके नॉट ओनली विद द टाइम इट ऑल्सो शुड अलाइन द स्टूडेंट वॉट स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू डू इन अ स्पेसिफिक टाइम सो फर्स्ट रिमेंबर बोथ द स्टूडेंट एंड टीचर शुड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज टू बी एक्सपेक्टेड ओके इट शुड रेड्यूज द एम्बिक्विटी ओके इट शुड रेड्यूज द एम्बिक्विटी रिमेंबर इट शुड बी स्पेसिफिक ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिफ्थ स्टैंडर्ड मैथ्स मैथमेटिकल क्लास इट कैन बी लर्निंग सिंपल मल्टीप्लीकेशन और मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल ऑफ मे बी नंबर थर्टीन थर्टीन मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल लर्निंग दैट पर्टिकुलर वन दैट विल बी अ स्पेसिफिक गोल फॉर वन पर्टिकुलर क्लास ओके रिमेंबर इज फॉर वन पर्टिकुलर क्लास लर्निंग द टेबल ऑफ थर्टीन मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल ऑफ थर्टीन दैट इज स्पेसिफिक गोल ओके दैट इज स्पेसिफिक गोल सो द टीचर नोज बाई द एंड ऑफ द क्लास आई हैव टू टीच द स्टूडेंट्स अबाउट द मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल ऑफ थर्टीन द स्टूडेंट नोज दैट बाई द एंड ऑफ द क्लास दे विल लर्न अबाउट द मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल ऑफ थर्टीन ओके दैट इज अबाउट द स्पेसिफिसिटी नेक्स्ट इज मेशरेबल ओके द गोल कैन बी मेशर्ड ओके दैट कैन बी मेशर्ड इट कैन बी द ऑब्जेक्टिव शुड बी फ्रेम्ड इन सच अ वे दैट इट मेक्स मेक्स इट पॉसिबल टू एसेस ओके वेदर इट हैज बीन अचीव और नॉट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट कैन बी मेशर्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू एनालाइज और स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम based on the multiplication table of थर्टीन okay if the student has learned the multiplication table of थर्टीन they should be able to write it down okay that is a method of assessment right so she and um, the yeah the student should be able to solve what थर्टीन into सेवन is okay that might be a measurable thing right so that is the measurable aspect of the goal okay so here whenever we write down the criteria which should be measurable right so to understand if it is measurable or not they should always use certain verbs okay action verbs action verbs have to be used in case of measurable objectives for example it can be analyze it can analyze it's an action verb identify it is again an action word verb right so these things have to be used in case of measurable aspect of criteria Uh, measurable aspect of objective criteria next is achievable you see we it should be realistic right it we cannot expect a fifth standard student to know about differentials <coughs> or integrations the student cannot know about all those things so it should be always realistic and attainable within the time frame okay so knowing about the 13 multiplication of 13 tab, uh, 13 is not difficult to learn in one single class right one single class so it should be realistic it should be attainable within a time frame of a lesson or course okay this should be consider um this should be consider for making it achievable the teacher should consider the prior knowledge the teacher cannot jump from directly fifth multiplication table to 13th multiplication table unless and until the student knows 12th table they cannot go into the 13th table okay so similarly the prior knowledge has to be assessed and abilities has to be known to understand if the if the student will be able to attain a, a, attain that particular goal or not then only this particular achievability can be attained fine next is relevance okay relevance or re, uh, relevance is actually the objective should be aligned with educational goals right broader educational ed, educational goals are set up right so that this particular objective should align with those goals also okay so it should be meaningful to the students also it should be relevant in the uh, relevant for students also it should not be like um, teaching the medical students about uh, maybe mechanics of a car right so it should be relevant to the student to teach the student about the particular subject fine so relevance ensures that the student sees the value in what they are learning okay so when the students see that they are that what they are learning is actually useful for them it will increase their motivation right so that is the importance of relevance in the smart criteria then coming to time bound so whenever we are putting a criteria putting putting up a criteria writing a criteria or writing a, a learning objective we should always specify a time frame like learning the multiplication table of 13 within 2 weeks that is a objective 
which is actually giving the specificity which is giving a measurement learning the 13 table right it can be measured achievable within two weeks it is easily achievable by the students right it can be relevant learning 13 table is relevant because it will help in the mathematical calculation of the further classes and also it will be helpful in the total betterment of the uh, students mathematical skills right next one time bound within two weeks the two weeks time is duration is actually um, mentioned right so that becomes the complete objective okay complete learning objective okay so that is about the smart criteria it should be specific it should be measurable it should be achievable it should be relevant and it should be time bound these five things has to be has to be fulfilled while creating or while writing a learning objective next one is about the role of learning objective what are the uh, roles why are we creating such um, objectives what is the need of it need for learning objective is for guiding instructional planning on the basis of this objectives only we'll plan the instructional instructions okay it creates a blueprint okay it creates a blueprint and helps the teacher what is to be covered what content has to be covered and how it has to be covered how frequent lessons has to be considered has to has to be set up and what kind of teaching methods has to be used all those things are guided by the objectives okay the teachers are guided by the objectives to plan how the instructions when the instructions has to be given and in what sequence has to be given and what resources has to be used that is the basic thing next one is informing assessment strategies okay learning objectives are actually the foundation of assessment right because in this we are saying about the measurable aspect right measurable aspect is done, measurable is done how how can we measure the objective by assessment right so this criteria the objectives learning objectives provide a criteria against which the student's performance is measured right the same examples of 13 table of 13 means the students will be assessed on the basis of their ability to uh, narrate or ability to write down the table of 13 so the student as a student can be assessed on that thing so assessment strategies can be formed and formulated on the basis of these objectives okay so evaluating the process evaluating the process of uh, learning all these things can be done and also evaluating if the process is fair and transparent everything can be done on the basis of this particular objective next is enhancing the students understanding and focus okay enhancing the students understanding and focus if we have a clear learning objective we will know what to teach the student and students will know what is expected of them right the students will know that um, the multiplication table of 13 is to be taught to them and by the end of two weeks they will have to learn the particular uh, table of 13 right so they they know what is expected of them so that will reduce the ambiguity that will reduce the ambiguity or vaguity in the vagueness of the classes and thereby it increases the understanding right increases the focus the student will focus on this one better right because they know by the end of the class because of their assessment strategies has has already been set up they'll know at the end of the class at the end of two weeks it will be assessed so they will have more focus right so that will mean um, that will increase their motivation also on the certain thing next is facilitating differentiated instructions because we know the learning objectives because we know what has been taught to the students what is what has to be taught to the students and also because of our knowledge about the learners we can tailor the instructions okay this instructional planning is there right we can tailor them accordingly to the students need okay according to the students need we can appropriately provide the support and enrichment and resources to the student okay so that the students can progress towards their goals okay so at the end of two weeks the students have to learn about this multiplication of 13 right so the teacher understands the need of the um, achievement of the school and also the students also understand that basic thinking student the teacher will somehow however possible however she has to adjust she will adjust and try to um, support the student in their learning process okay so that is about the facilitated um, facilitating differentiated instruction next uh, next next need of this uh, learning objective is actually to support reflection and feedback okay 
this provides this objectives learning objectives provide basis for the reflection and feedback both for the students and teachers the students will be able to understand reflect if they are able to learn properly or not because it is time bound the students know where they stand do they need more time the students will understand their pace of learning similarly the teacher the teacher will understand if they are able to complete the certain topic or complete the certain portions at the designated period or not okay the object the students can use the objectives whichever is put up they can use to self assess okay they can themselves create a formative assessment they can see if they are able to um, fulfill that criteria or fulfill the uh, goals right they can fulfill the goals or not by themselves self reflection self assessment can be done similarly the teacher can reflect on their assessment or their um, instructions okay their effectiveness of these things based on the students performance so these things are the important thing aspects of um, teaching which can be achieved by the learning objectives okay so with this we have finished with pedagogy um, this is pedagogy about pedagogy you have to remember it is very much essential it is actually how the teachers teach that is a basic understanding it is both art and science deals with the theory and practice of teaching it gives a framework to the whole teaching it caters to the needs of the students and how to create a learning better and under, but better learning experience and also how to formulate the formulation of this learning objectives that is also done via pedagogy it gives instructions it gives uh, assessments it gives uh, it gives places for student engagement all these things are done via pedagogy and with this they can create a purposeful and powerful learning environment okay so this was about pedagogy remember in the ntt exams it is uh, inscribed to be given for 10 questions maximum might be asked okay maximum 10 questions will be asked from this particular portion of pedagogy all the things have been dealt with okay uh, the the origin of the word different influences or influential thinkers okay all the rise of pedagogy and all the different time periods or historical aspect has already already been dealt with so with this we finish the whole portions of ntt that syllabus have been covered uh, if any doubts you can ask in the chat box or something and we will be um, replying to it if possible okay also give us suggestions if you need any mcq sessions we will be conducting if needed um based on your need you can tell us if you need or not and uh, most of the classes are a little bit slower so you can just adjust your time uh, just your speed of the video on from the settings you can go to a speed session and you can increase the speed to 1x or 1.2x or 1.25x or 2x based on your comfort level okay and please practice the mcqs practice uh, mcqs are available in the internet you can just google it you will find certain mcqs practice this mcqs then only you'll be more um, understand you'll understand your own uh, level okay where you have reached and what more studying you have to do okay so with this we finish with the whole ntt classes thank you for your patient listening make sure to subscribe to the channel so that we'll be able to make such videos again and again uh, with your support we can make it possible free classes will be available if if needed so if needed you can just uh, mention about the mcq sessions if you need or not before exams we will try to create uh, try to conduct such uh, sessions so thank you for listening have a nice day